play the music? That's what we should have had playing last night at the start. We used to have one of our meetings. The last one, you know, whoever's late. Would have to tell a joke. You got people there on time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they wanted to be on stage. It's called effective project management. That's very yeah. funny. We used but to stand up and give people. We used to stand up and give people uh, standing ovations when they walk in. No matter what we do, I'm a little teapot, and they literally had to do the whole thing. That's all I do. All right. The bag, the sail bag. So we are on camera, just so you know. Rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to welcome everybody. This is the joint um, town council and school board workshop um, slash uh, meeting for our finance committees. It is a little bit after two o'clock. Um, we're on a little bit of a tight schedule. We'd like to be done by three o'clock as other people. Um, some people do have appointments. Um, and so we, we need to get to work here. We just want to welcome everybody. Um, all the members of both finance committees are present as well as town staff that have been supporting us and uh, we do have uh, Chairman Bill Donovan that is also here with us so thank you for joining us uh, Bill. And um, the first item on the agenda is old business uh, which is the status of the glossary development. So we're still getting close. I'm thinking maybe by the time we vote we might have them all down pat. Um, Ruth was nice enough yesterday afternoon to send me a couple more. But I believe Sean. <laughs> oh. I'm fine with everything that's been written. No, 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 no. You have some that you're supposed to be writing. <laughs> 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 nice try, Sean. Yeah. I appreciate that you're doing that. But you are, we still need some help with. Um, I think there's only like three. That document that Ruth sent out yesterday. It I tried. Have, I didn't see the ones that I had sent in that? Yes, yeah, that was um, because the town site doesn't have Google Docs, so I'll take her, <laughs> I'll take her oh, okay. That's email. Fine. I just want to make sure that the one that I'm sure is going to go. Yeah. Right, perfect. So, do you want me to tell you what? No, can you just email me? Yeah. Yes. So we are not the document, just email me. What the are the three, three definitions? Of what are, what I'll have it to you by five o'clock tonight. What are the three terms? Maybe we, we could help Sean a little bit. Um, <laughs> Help out. Yeah. I wonder what they are. Um, I don't need help. Unfunded <laughs> uh -huh. mandates. Unfunded mandates. Okay, that's easy. Um, yeah, there's no like suburbs here. Uh, discretionary spending. That's why she gave you easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> and please hold, still going. <coughs> Unfunded mandates. Two. You have two. Okay. Do you, do you want to do this right now, or do you want to? No. Okay. okay. I don't think we should take time. We only have an hour. Right. Okay. okay. We'll take two seconds to email back and forth, and we'll be on track. The beauty of that is that's a, a document that will last into time, and I, you know, I'll incorporate it in the budget document, so we won't have to go over this territory next year. Right. We'll have new yeah, ones. Well, it won't even be new. There'll be just ones that we can add to. I mean, right. some of these are obvious ones that will stay on here for. Yeah. Ever. Is there somebody doing final editing on those? Like as far as if they thought it was too wordy or not the right words? That might be something for a later agenda Just topic check. after we get through the Perfect. Once we have them all, we, we're sort of going right. to yeah. all look at them and say, hey, I have a question on this one. Yeah. Okay. The next, uh, I guess we'll move on to the next item if anyone uh, yes. has uh, we just at the CPAIR and um, our main pre or M pre report. I suggested we put this on just because uh, was it just at our last meeting we had the report? Or was that two meetings ago? Maybe two. Two was two, now. Was two, I think. Two. Well, whenever it was, uh, from my perspective, we didn't really have a chance as a group to kind of digest it and maybe uh, identify a couple of takeaways. Um, and I think there was some, in my opinion, there was some good work here, some substance that's worth at least discussing. I just would hate for this to get, you know, tucked in the file and, and not considered. So I, I just wanted to put it on the agenda to kind of prompt the conversation. If you guys are comfortable with receiving it and moving on, no, fine. So um, I'll add a part of this and then go from there um, as a recap. So. Um, just for that, because I forget that we're being uh, televised, monitored, watched, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> when, when we started the conversation around the study, one, it was to validate independently um, the expertise information that we were being given by the superintendent's office and the staff and, and the school board. So one, I want to say thank you for that. 
Um, it confirmed exactly what we've been told, um, more statistically, I think, than the narrative conversations that we've had. However, the exercise was intended to help us identify what would be an appropriate measure, metrics, uh, ratio, whatever, however you want to um, label that, going forward that can synthesize um, all the work that is done to help the council in particular, but even the community as a whole, to um, know that we're achieving our goals um, with the spending. So for me, the only takeaway is, um, well, there's two. One, either accept the report as it is and leave the conversation around metrics alone and not identify one. Or is there one that is embedded within that report or embedded in um, other data that I know the superintendent provides on a regular basis and some, a lot of documents that are online um, that can be um, aggregated with the town metrics that they're creating um, so that we can include that portion of it. Um, so to me, that's the takeaway. Either we accept this, as, as Tom mentioned, and just say, you know what, um, it's too complex and we don't have a ratio that's really good um, because there's so many. Or is there one that can be added, or two or three, or whatever it might be? And when I say a metrics, I'm looking, personally, I'm looking for a macro approach to this and not an individual. So as an example, while I, I'm, I'm personally a, a in favor of the per pupil approach, um, subsets of that might be interesting, but to me is more within the purview of the school board to monitor. So as an example, that report provided us with literacy, math, and science, I think it was, for was it um, three, six, or three, six, and 11? Five, eight, and 11. Five, eight, and 11, sorry. Um, that, to me, micro. So, you know, is there a macro um, kind of ratio or ma ma macro metric out of all of this that we can look at? One or two or three things. And I would take, personally, I would take the recommendation of the school board um, and, and the staff that can be included in the metrics dashboards that we're looking at creating on the town site. So that's kind of my position. Yeah, I'll kind of chime in. I, I mean, I take a similar, uh, I have a similar view, but maybe a little different approach. I do think that the, um, to, to me, we, we, we we're striving for the, the trust but verify approach of, uh, you know, what, what's been out there, what's been told, what, what we're using as metrics is, is verifiable. Um, I think a third party independent analysis just verifies what we've been saying all along and what, what the school board has been saying all along um, in terms of where we're at. It doesn't mean, it's not a roadmap for how we go forward. It's in a snapshot, an analysis of where we're at right now as a district. So I, while I, I mean, I agree the metrics are important in the dashboard. I think that's a great check-in. I don't think that's the end-all be-all. I think from a council counselor perspective, um, I, I, we have the fiduciary responsibility to the school board side of things. We need to, we're, we're, we're the budget interface. That's, that's all we are. So for us, it's important to see where the money's going, how it's being spent, what the results are. I would uh, defer to, to your point, Sean, I'd defer to the school board for what metrics you want to measure for performance and what you feel is appropriate and how to measure it. I know that's a very, that's a lot easier said than done because it's very controversial in terms of things like uh, you know, teacher performance and how do you evaluate all those things and lump it all together. So it's not as simple as picking out page four, paragraph seven and saying that's what we go with from a performance standpoint. Um, so I think it's a good basis for the conversation to say, you know, when, when, when it, with any department, I would, you know, when we get uh, finally to a point with the, the municipality, hopefully where we have a similar set of dashboards and measurements, we could say, okay, public safety, you know, we're, we're looking at these three criteria there's your performance there, but um, you know there are other things that play into that department that, as a council, we don't necessarily need to know. But that's what the department has it for, if that makes sense. So, I, you know, I, I see it as a as a, a a verification of kind of the the conversation you've had over the last several years, and I see it as basically hopefully a mechanism and a means to put that discussion to rest about where we're at and where we're measuring and be able to say, okay, we agree where we're at, um, how do we get, how do we move forward? Where do we go from here? And, and, and where do we, you know, what's our priorities? That's we're all, it's all about establishing the priorities. And as long as we're, we're sharing those, um, they, we don't have to have all the same priorities lined up, but 
the two or three that we can recognize and track, I think, are the important ones. Can I just push a little bit yeah. on, on that one point? Yeah. I guess I've heard both you and Sean make it. So if there's this verification or validation, I think we need to articulate that I mean, mm -hmm. to make sure everyone appreciates we need to put it out there so everyone understands, sure. oh, perhaps shaking their head yes. And more importantly, we need to communicate that out because the audience around this table, though important, maybe the most important, um, I think the real value in this is kind of making sure the community appreciates uh, that what that validation is. And if we can simplify it in kind of sound bites or the elevator speech, um, to me that's a hugely important thing is for the residents to have a baseline appreciation kind of an assessment of Scarborough schools. I, I don't know, it's probably easier said than done, but I think that's a, there's a disconnect there. What, do well. you see that in like a report out, or do you see that as like a cut counselor comments, or in like in lieu of the budget comments, or something? I don't know, like? I think there's any number of communication strategies that, that could be used. But we're, now, we're now at the point where I think we can get beyond some of the cr critiques of the data, um, perhaps, and, and be a little more finite in terms of what is that kind of simple takeaway, of what is the assessment of Scarborough schools and then to my great surprise and delight this actually also looks and indicates what could you be doing better and that's a different conversation in right. terms of identifying uh, maybe ultimately so, boiling down the metrics but identifying this is where we need to exert some attention and investment uh, and we need to measure success uh, around that. <coughs> I think it does a few things. Um, I think uh, basically it establishes per pupil cost as a legitimate and appropriate uh, measure, and if you want the macro, there it is. Um, it gives you an opportunity to uh, take a look at um, other apples to apples um, comparisons in terms of, we are spending too much on administration. Actually, we spend the least in terms of almost all of the uh, schools in, the, in both counties on administration. Um, we, can, we can use it to monitor special education costs are the costs in Scarborough be accelerating at a different rate than other places and so on. I think um, it establishes us um, uh, as a member of a cohort and I think that what that did was it looked at spending and efficiencies but it also specifically brought in um, something very important to us that is a little bit more nebulous and a little bit more difficult to do the comparisons um, and that is the student outcomes. And it, it, so it's a start there, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and I think that it really s this this sort of nicely serves as a, a great starting point for the board to say, you know what, we're gonna, you know, this was really this did not cost us a lot of money, um, and this data is all publicly available, so it can be verified by anybody who has any questions about it. But um, we also established, I think, uh, Kate, if, uh, I think you might agree, that we established a sort of a nice relationship uh, with these folks uh, to be able to say, all right, let's, let's take another, uh, you know, barometer reading in, um, you know, after we get our testing sort of underway and we've got a couple of years under our belt, let's look at where we are then. Or may, maybe even just a, a refreshing um, of it on an annual basis, I, I think could be very helpful. But there's... Um, you know, the, the, the pieces that I put in the summary are things that I thought were important for the community to know. And, um, and that was about establishing us um, as uh, a member of a cohort and in fact um, one of the higher performing members of um, the, the cohort group. And when we look at the highest performing members of the group, we are knocking on their door. Um, regardless of being in 14th place with U.S. World and News, which is really a function of how many AP tests did kids take based on the, the population, we already said that we're, we're having difficulty, um, you know, we're turning kids away from AP. So it's not, it's not that there's not an aspiration uh, to take AP classes and do well, and the kids generally do well, but we, we're not offering AP sites that kids want. Um, you know, we only do that every so often. We're not allowing every kid who wants to get into an AP science class in because it's, there's more kids than we can actually accommodate. So those, those, that, th those kinds of things that are, are more the public rankings, people go, oh, you know, how did you fall or we're going, we're going, you know, we're going off track. Well, as I pointed out last night, 
the data is from 1314. So it's, it's, that data is already two years old. So it's telling you about where we were in history at some point in time related to AP class which I'm, I'm not sure that that's as important as some of this other, these, these other pieces. How are those other cohorts spending money? What kind of outcomes are they getting? Um, it seems as though, except for the highest performing schools, um, everybody else in the cohort is seeing that sort of that droop in, at the high school level. And, uh, you know, and, and I think that we've seen that and we are, we've been awakened to that a long time ago and have been working on that but it takes a long time to kind of turn a, a big ship around and really, especially if you're investing at, a, at this level where you could potentially be investing at this level. So, um, I, you know, I, I think they did a great job and I think that it really, it's a great stake in the ground. That's, that's what I see it as. So maybe we, we, we agree then just to renew the, the, revisit them. I mean, it's kind of the foundation this year. I mean, short of, of flagging something now, that we're going to pin to for the budget and say this is our benchmark moving forward. I don't think we're I don't know if we're ready to do that or not as a group. Uh, if not, then we we come back and look at it again, update the metrics next year with the same parameters, the same exact criteria, <coughs> and then we we you know three years makes a trend, right? So if we start looking at that and then we say okay, we're identifying the, those trendings, then the discussion shifts from are those the right trending ones to which ones are up and down and what does that mean and are those the ones we need to be concerned about? Uh, to me, that, that kind of forward thinking, I think that's really the work and domain of the Board of Education and the, and the school staff to sort out what does this mean and how do we make investments and then it's up to you to um, articulate that, be able to, to, sh to demonstrate why this investment needs to made, be made and what the metrics are. That, that's really your domain. Let's see. <coughs> I was going to say, and just a little different spin, maybe building a little bit on what you said. One of the <coughs> one of the other goals we have, though, as as a community, to think about one budget, one town. One thing we recognize is how do we tell our story? How do we get the information out mm -hmm. into the hands of our constituents so they understand? And we're starting to get a lot more questions around. Well, you know, we're kind of approaching the budget one year at a time. People are starting to ask, what does that mean longer term? So one of the opportunities in this might be or what I was thinking was, and it kind of builds on Tom, is there a story we can tell? And, and I'll just use the business experience. I was at Hanover for a long time, but they always had a three-year business plan. So they could say, here's where we are, here's where we want to go, and here's what we're going to kind of use as our measures along the way if we're getting there. Is this an opportunity for us to tell a story? And, and we've had a lot of questions about the value, the value of money that people are getting for the tax dollars they're spending. I don't think it's a conversation for today, but I'd love to find a way that we can tell a story about as we decide as a community where resources go, where do we want to go, how do we want to get there, and what are the measures along the way we're going to use to kind of report back. So I'd love to have that conversation at some point. I'm not sure where it fits. The first step that you just described, where are we, I think it's been a, yeah. there's a bit of a disconnect, and I think that's one of the fundamental things this does is really, I hope, establish kind of in a simplistic form where are we? Kind of the very macro state of Scarborough schools. The th forward stuff is really the work of the board. Yeah, well, I, I I'd like to step back and say, I mean, th that was the presentation that Sean gave last night, the 135 message. We're in year two of a, of a, of a five-year kind of process, if you will, a little bit. I mean, I, I think that, um, I think this is part of that process. I mean, I don't think it's, um, you know, that's why I said I think it's a good foundation to start building on. And then the point of having this joint, this joint committee is to be able to communicate what's going on between the two governing bodies in an effective way so that A, there's no surprises at the mm -hmm. budget time, and B, that we can plan accordingly to say, okay, if we know if we know there's a public works building coming next year or in two years or three years or X number of years, we know we're not going to be looking at school, and school uh, uh, facility investment. So we can have those kind of, you know, 50,000 foot discussions of, of strategic discussions. I think this helps that because what I mean by trending is I don't necessarily want to get into the weeds and go, well, item number five is skewing 3% in the wrong direction. What are we going to do to fix that? It's more of when we do have this discussion again of I'm sure the next year is going to come back and we know there's going to be at least three more positions for the high school. That's a given. We've already been informed of that next year. Mm -hmm. If there are other ones, then the question I think we have as counselors has to say, okay, well, what do you hope to accomplish with that? What is your, what's the goal with that? This helps give some of that credibility to that discussion, I think, because if it's a question of, well, we need a, an administrator to manage apps, 
you know what I mean? Then we could say, well, what, why do you, where, what is that from? Well, if you look at this report, we're short here, so we're clearly, it's not a question of overstaff. It's, a, it's, it, it's not the tool, it's a tool for helping. Well, my simple point is I don't want to lose the, the potential value of telling a simple story mm -hmm. to a wider audience. Right. And in my mind, I can boil it down to a, you know, two lines. We do it cheaper, better than most. And people may disagree with me, but we do it more cost effectively yeah. Yeah. and uh, higher like that. And, and we can wordsmith that. But I think those kind of simple little pieces that get repeated and people understand, that gives you a stronger foundation from which to build. And I think whether we like to recognize it or not, I, I believe that there's some fractures. There's some parts of our community that don't believe that today. There, there always will be. I, I mean, I agree with that. I know that, that that's the case, but I don't think that's something that can be fixed in a year. I mean, I think that's why we did the 135 thing. Where we know but I don't know that he's saying it has to be fixed tomorrow. No, he's saying if we start that process right. now, right. people will start hearing it and, and mm -hmm. looking so into it and finding out that it's right. actually is This is about true. rebuilding, uh, well, no, I don't want to go there. It's not really trust, but it's really, it, it's making sure everyone is on the same page that has a, a fair assessment of where we are. I think for for me, just to sort of talk about that report and then also what Peter was saying was sort of looking forward, with that report, I, in my mind, I see two different avenues. One is, yes, we're, we're, when you look at the whole group, we're running with the, the folks at the top. We're knocking on their door. I like that sort of that thought process. Um, but that's in terms of, um, someone had asked, why did we choose those people? It's based on performance, and so when you base it on performance, you you see the clear definition of those. I think it was five at the top, and we're we're right there, number six. So to me, that's where we as a school board are saying, okay, we are so close. There are a few strategic investments that we can make that will really turn the ship. Will will make a difference in. <coughs> in where we fall with, within that top six, say. Um, so I sort of look at it that way um, with regards to performance. That's our task. We need to figure out how to make that better and, and move up that, that list. But with regards to the long-term planning, we, we do that with a 24-month improvement plan. It started as an 18-month and now it's 24 months. So we ask the community what's, what's important to them, what what does the school department need to do to move ahead or move forward or create something better? Whatever. It could be, you know, recycling. There's kids that are involved. There's students that say, I want more string instrument lessons or whatever it is. And we sort of tweak that out to come up with what are our goals and our plans to move in the next 24 months to reach those goals. So, and that keeps you know, we, we keep going over that. And yes, it's only 24 months, but I think at this point that's <coughs> about as far out because things change so fast. So for on education, if you're looking 24 months out, it's considered a pretty long time. To add, um, to Chris's point, uh, Chris, just, you know, my recommendation or my suggestion of picking or finding those ratios are, isn't to measure this year's budget. Right. It's to get them in place so that we can do the calculations, we can find the resources to determine what um, we want to measure it to so that we can start looking at it next year as part of that story. Personally, I would be happy with um, three ratios per pupil cost, um, class size, and graduation rate. To, to me, those are big pictures about the success of the school department. The smaller pieces, I trust the school department, the school board, who are elected to make that determination for this community you have that trust to determine whether or not the other pieces are working. That tells me the highest level. And as far as the cohort piece, um, personally, I don't like comparing Scarborough to other communities. Um, I'm a father of a graduate of Cape Elizabeth High School, and I can tell you, um, Cape Elizabeth is not any better than Scarborough. And I can, I, I, I mean, I've got, I went through it, 12 years of schooling in Cape Elizabeth for my daughter. They're not any worse, they're not any better, they're just as good. Um, so there's some, obviously some personal value in how you interpret dollars as well. I would rather see us, and it was part of the, the, the report, is to use an average of the cohort that is, um, that is being used. That way we're not looking at us in comparison to 
If you want to get that data, it's available, but we don't need to look at it. And here's the average and here's how we compare to. If anyone wants to criticize the cohort that is selected, even if we choose another cohort and we're outperforming that, it should not suggest that we deteriorate our system so that we're equal to the others. It should, if anything, say we still need to continue to get better and continue to be further apart from the rest of them. So I look at the glass being half full and half empty and still being an opportunity. So however that's done, I'm just saying is that from, um, and I've said this privately too, but I'll say it publicly, I'm tired of talking about just education in this, in this town. There is more to this community than education. It is a very important part of it, but fire department, police department, public work, community services, senior services, everything, administration is just as important. And this committee was intended to talk about all of those services and not just the school department because we should be held accountable about what are the metrics we're going to use to measure the other parts. Mm -hmm. Because this is only one very vague, but it's, a, it's one part of that story. It's going to be balanced with the rest of it. Um, and we're not doing that. And I'll, I mean, I'll just add the last two things. I, I think the, one of the challenges, we're coming at it with, with similar but different goals, right? I mean, our goals from the council is a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the money that we're investing is being used appropriately and most efficiently as possible and that it's a good, solid investment, and we have to decide how that, how that money is invested. The school board has to do that as well, but their primary, it, their primary issue is performance, that the kids need to do certain things. They need to behave and perform certain tasks and, and achieve certain things. So I think the, one of the outcomes, I hope, of this collaboration is, 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 is melding those student performances with the fiduciary performance so that when the school board comes in front of the town uh, or the council and the town and says, I want this investment because it, it's not, it, the, the discussion shouldn't be, I want this much money. The discussion should be, we want this outcome. This is the outcome one. This is what we want the kids to be achieving. And then this group will sit down and say, well, what does that cost and what is that worth? And that's what the, then, then the public will decide, or maybe not, if we don't get the budget. But, but that's, that's what I want the discussion to be around. What are the outcomes that we want? And, and get shift from the, you know, are we investing 100000 or 200000 or are we taking out 200000 I, I I think the, that's really what I'm hoping this group can bring together. And then we can present that, that common approach of, look, we, we've done our due diligence as counselors. We've looked at it from a fiduciary responsibility. We, we know what the investments are going to be. We know how much. We know why. We know where. The school board can say, these are the outcomes we expect. That's what we're tracking. That's what we're, that's what we're going for. And in a year or two or three, if that doesn't happen, whatever we decide the reasonable time frame is, then we go back and reevaluate again. And we say, we made this investment before. We agreed the outcomes weren't what we expected. We're, did we miss something? Was it not a, not a large enough investment? Was it in the wrong place? Was it a different program or what, then we can have that discussion about the accountability portion of it. So I think the report is actually a very positive thing because it starts, oh, I, I think it helps us move in that direction more of instead of talking about the detail, the, into the weeds too much on, on both of them, it allows us to take that step back and go, well, we trust that that data is, we may not, we may not like it, we may not agree with it, but we trust that it's, it's, it's unbiased. It's a third, it's, it's fair and neutral. Uh, then we can now move the discussion on to what are our priorities for investment, <laughs> and why? And you know, when, and I'm stating the obvious here, but I felt the same way last night, thinking we're talking a lot about sections of pieces of money, and I kept thinking we need to step back and sort of think about there were there were uh, there was there were three older people in the second row last night, and two of them I think I didn't get to talk to them after lived in my neighborhood growing up. And I sat there and I kept thinking, these people are now members of the Scarborough community, and, and so am I, but I moved back here because of my community, not because of $50,000 invested in athletics. Or it, it was, It's a bigger picture, and I felt like we keep losing that as we get closer to the budget vote or discussions, we, we lose the point. And so I agree that we need to stop talking about um, per pupil spending. For us as a school board, we don't make the budget thinking, okay, does this meet the, the goal of per pupil spending? Yeah. Like it, it's not, it's, yes, it's a metric that you all could use, but it's not something that we consciously say, okay, we need to have per pupil spending at X. We're looking at 
we need to invest in five teachers to create an outcome of 11th grade or whatever that report was of performance. And how that shakes out sort of just shakes out at the end and we're like, okay, there's what our per people spending is. With, with all due respect, I can, uh, <coughs> Chris, I can remember you articulating on behalf of the, the board standing right at this podium, using per pupil as as a way of, I think, <coughs> demonstrating that we're, we need to be more. It's, it's something that can be used after the fact, but it's not something that we use as a school board to say. But the <coughs> point of this is that every time that came forward, there were a lot of folks that dismissed it for this, that, or the other reason, that it wasn't valid. And what I would hoped through this, by having kind of this professional independent view of this, impartial, is that we could transcend beyond that and get away from the weeds to say, this is the best data that's available. The simple takeaway is that we do it better than most and, and we spend less than, mo than but most. People are still going to look at the week and that's fine, but that's not but I think how you we start at the No, process. but I think your point, Tom, I mean, I, we, we do have to justify our actions to the public and I think that's up to our, that's our prerogative as counselors and as a body to say, why are, they're going to ask us point blank, why are you voting for this budget? Why are you supporting it? What, what's your mechanism behind it? I think, I think to Jody's point, I, I think what she's trying to say is we, they don't craft the budget. They don't start off with uh, with a blank sheet and go, okay, we know our per pupil spending is X, so we take that, multiply that by the number of students, and that's our budget. I think what I think what the per pupil spending does is it's it's one of those it's one of those potential indicating factors that could be used to show whether the investments whether we're putting too much money, not where it's going. If that that's a measure of how much money you're investing, not where it's going. To I'm just spot. observing from my perspective. Right. Up until now, and it remains to be seen if it changes in the future that per pupil, those statistics have been ineffectual. In fact, they've been noise around, they've taken us away from the real discussions in many respects. I'm hoping we can kind of step beyond that, start to have a real forward-looking discussion. This yeah. is important stuff to check in on from time to time, but it shouldn't be the primary conversation piece, and it has been. Right. You know, you know in, in my experience at Hanford was, you know, I always had to sell into the C-suite every time I wanted to do anything. And when I talked about an investment, what I'd always do is say, okay, here's the investment we're asking for. And here's what we're going to come back and talk to you as a measure of our success. So for each, each time we came, that establishes trust. You go and you ask and say, okay, we're going to be accountable for whatever that ask is. This is what we hope to achieve. And what we did little by little as you start to build that trust, and that, that's what we kind of need to do with our constituents, that we are making good investments. These are the reasons we're making investments, and as we make those investments and we get the outcomes we say we're going to get, that allows us to continue that, that those tensions go away and there's greater trust. So I'm not trying to describe what those are, but I think as we tell our story, we should really talk about the investments we're making, the value we think we're going to get for them, and how are we going to determine how we do, however we do that. I think we've done that with that. I think it's yeah. a good job of that. I mean, an example of that. But, yeah, that's, but that's looking... Yeah, an example but of that is that. I, I, no, I mean I know what you're. I know what you're saying. Yeah. I, I mean I just, and I think we're doing that already. I think that's part of the process and part of this. I think we might be doing it, but I'm not sure our constituents right. know the story. But that, that's my and, point. And, and, and you're right. And I think it's like any, like any. It takes a while for an adopter. For, for the, uh, we start. We've got to start that process. I think we started it. We're two years into the process. I think it's. You know, the, I think the real question is, is when do we want to get to where you're describing, Tom? Do we want to do it this year? Do we want to push and try and get it done next year? Or the year? I mean, the sooner we get it done, the better, obviously. I just don't know how 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 um, realistic it could be to get there in a you know this year or next year. I think we're doing it. We're just not communicating. Everyone doesn't understand it. Case right. in point, the simple takeaway for me is that we need to do something's happening at the high school. I don't know what it is that's for you guys to figure out. And in fact. Last year, we had a million dollar investment in technology. This year, we're looking at the thrust of uh, staff improvements at the high school. That's exactly as the way it should work. This is kind of a big picture, something, you know, this is, we need to invest in the high school. Then it's for you to figure out how to actually put that money to play and make that cogent argument well, and secure the funding for it. Story to that's come, what did we accomplish right. by those computers right. and the additional right. staffing? And, and that's the measure I think that has to come out is, Absolutely. look, this is, right. we did this. This is the outcome. And it could be we're going to improve reading and math scores by 2% over five years. I, I'm just so spitballing. But. One thing to keep in mind is that in education, um, for, as you know, I'm not the expert. 
it, it, you're not going to see that investment return for quite a few years. So no matter what ratio you pick, you won't see that until time has passed. Um, second is that um, it gets drives to my point. My point is that um, I don't want to be talking about personally about how much money goes to high school, middle school, or the elementary levels. That is for the school department to determine what their goal is um, and, and where they're focusing. I want to focus on the bigger picture, um, from a, at least from a synopsis basis. We can still have a conversation and engage in a conversation, you know, because it's, it's nice to know. But I don't think this town council is a second school board where we need to start looking at what is the success rate of the high school versus the middle school versus. That's not, you know, I, if we're going to do the, So my point to us three, if we're going to do that for this particular department and not diminish the role of the school department, then we need to do the same conversation with every other department. And we haven't focused on any of that. And so I think that there's an overabundance of conversation on this end of it, and I'm just saying, um, and by the way, we're, we've got 23 minutes to finish it. <laughs> I agree. So, yes. Yeah. So what I'm saying is um, if the, if the uh, consensus amongst the group is that we're not going to identify a metric and we're going to wait a year, then I just want it to be on the record so that I know in my own head where to put, post this for, a t you know, for the next conversation type of thing. Or are we going to sit there and recommend here are some macro level type of metrics that I, and like I said, I have three. And I'm okay with the per pupil, class size, and graduation rates. I wonder whether what I'm kind of hearing um, has a, a pathway into the outreach piece that's always a continual struggle for us. And I'm, I'm looking at the website, the, the budget portal right now. We have the CPAIR um, study is we have an introductory paragraph to it that talks about what it is. Withdraw maybe, it's just the mm -hmm. intro to the report. But I'm wondering if from what I'm hearing from Tom and, and from Peter as well, is if maybe we need to jazz it up a little bit and say, hey, there's this great report out here. Here's an intro, here are the three bullet points, here are the takeaways. So we have this um, gateway for people that we're hoping they're going to take advantage of. Um, Maybe that's a small step that we could take to tell the story with what we already have there. We just mm -hmm. tell it a little bit more. That's exactly the point. I didn't want to lose value of this. Yeah. If not, it oh. would tucked in the file, and maybe we'll talk about it next year. But so if it's there, but it's it's something where I look at it and go, mm -hmm. geez, I'm not sure I really want to read that. Maybe there's a way for it to be a little bit more exciting. And our said so, director and the town clerk are working on a fairly comprehensive newsletter that gives you snippets that hopefully will catch mm -hmm. your imagination so that you can then click on it, go here, and start to see some of this. So, you know, if uh, that might be a, a way to start that, you know. Is that an e-letter, like an email? Or so are there, back to where I started. Put, put marketing manager down as, a, but, as, another, <laughs> as another facility piece. I, mm -hmm. uh, we can not, share that. I'm not surprised. That's a shared service. Yeah. Yeah. But are there... <laughs> So a handful of takeaways that this group can come can come to consensus on, so we can invite them. I can, I can, I can, I can use my takeaways. We could just I have five takeaways. I think they're all reasonable. I think they establish a baseline that the board will, um, if I were to recommend, the board can take and, and move forward. Oh, sure. what page essentially, is it's page three of the summary. It's, it's, it's essentially saying, you know what, we've been matched in terms of like resources and like capacity to resource schools um, with a whole group. We've then been compared in terms of our outcomes, which is the learning outcomes for kids, which is sort of our deliverable. And what it does is it provides enough data to say, and <coughs> here's how we do it better, with it, to your point. Here's how we do it better. Compared to all of the cohorts, we spend the lowest amount on administration. Compared to all of the cohorts, when we've made investments in the past, all of those investments have been made in the classroom. Um, you know, the per pupil cost is this. this is, I mean, it's, it, there, these five takeaways in some ways really, really, I believe, I don't know that anybody would, could come up with any other takeaways, quite frankly. Fair enough. I want to make sure this yeah. group there so I around that. Are, that I, you want to go I, I think it would be best, you know, and again, you know, I plan to, um, you know, work with Kate and with the board chair and, and others on the board to say, 
This is, as I said, this is a great starting point. And there's a way to watch these metrics because now we are established. We've got, we're in the same group. We can see what they're doing. We can look at our outcomes. We always want to increase our learning outcomes, but we don't want it to be at the expense of being less efficient than where we are right now. Yep. This, th those are the three pieces. And the, and the matched capacity to pay or to support schools is already a done deal. Now we're just looking at to, to what end, what result, and at what cost. So I guess maybe then uh, I'll make a motion, <laughs> not that it's binding or anything, but uh, why don't we, what if we just take that paragraph and post it up yep. as a standalone? I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I can uh, about the change reporting. the intro yep. and punch up the size of the report a little bit. And yeah, we'll make that our can you, intro. Can you make the language jazzier? Uh, well, but it will be jazzier than what's on there right now, which is the C pairs yeah. intro, which is very research based yeah. and technical. Um, this will be George's more narrative piece. I, um, this is completely off topic, but I noticed that the link to the budget itself, our nice document that we want everyone to read, is really easy and really low on the page. So maybe that's something where we say, hey, read this. This is the one piece that you really need to know. This narrative is going to give you everything you need to know and put it big and high. And that is. Talk to so, Sean. All right. And I, I can edit on this page. So mm. if it even looked more like the, like, little newbie section yeah, on the school board page, sure. you know, like has like a little thumbnail of the calendar, stretch calendar, like even that that be <laughs> he wants it to catch their attention and grab them so that they can then turn around and be interested in reading. Well, I'll make a deal with you. If you guys don't change so anything in the budget that I have to fix, I'm going to have a deal, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So, so um, to move that forward, this is great. What I would personally would like to see in addition to this is just if there is any consolidated data to support the statement. So when you make a statement that says, during, and, and it's not because I'm questioning whether your statement is accurate, it's to be able to point to it. During the same time period, Scarborough's investments in systems and school administration in contrast was significantly below that of the aspirational cohort. You can show here for uh, the page graph of yeah. whatever the graph is, wherever if you want to click something, yeah. that's what I'm oh, kind of reference. That's, just that's exactly what I'm looking for. Reference. Reference to so might I suggest to move past this, Kate or George, if you put pull that piece together, you want to just share it with folks, sure. um, and then we can we can work from there. You will be graded on sentence structure and yeah. and spelling and as well. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and jazzing it up. And jazzing it up. And appeal. And appeal. Yeah. So, and appeal. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Jody's okay, and everyone. Uh, we need to really. Cause we got 15 minutes, maybe 20. I'm actually gonna write a song. <laughs> uh, under debrief budget rollout with updates if needed. I think we covered that last night. Is there? Uh, we're talking about the schedule, right? Yeah, I don't think there's anything new there. There shouldn't be anything new. Can you just tell me the time of our joint? Uh, 7 o'clock. Is it 7 o'clock? Yes. Okay. Right, and then the OLA um, uh, joint. Joint workshop on the 11th? On the 11th? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 7 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, because the 4th yeah. is a couple meeting. Yeah. We have we have finals at 4th. Right. right. Um, okay. Thank you. I, I do want to make sure that people are, are clear that on May 11th, <laughs> which is the Town Council's finance meeting, the last one. Um, there will be a uh, presentation by um, on the town side for about additional staff that weren't funded. The rest of the meeting will focus on the recommendation of the finance committee that will be sent to the um, full council. So any adjustments that are made, whether it's a net appropriation for schools or even on the town side, that's where the committee will decide and take a vote on its recommendation. So, and that's at Benefit? 4 o'clock? That starts May at 4 o'clock, May 11th. If you don't have any budget adjustment or changes from what's in here, if you can get them to make some creating a, a so, list. W yeah, so one of the things that um, I'm going to ask for the finance committee, my finance committee, um, as well as um, recommendation, as well as from the rest of the council is to submit any recommendations for consideration so that I can basically herd cats. <laughs> And balance out the commonalities um, and get those kind of um, situated so that you know if, we, if there's a consensus, not taking a vote, but if there's a consensus, take care of those in advance, and then drawing out those that may have a conflict or may have some discussion around, so that we can get through that fairly easy. So, and just as soon as uh, those are known, if it, there's anything that impacts the school's budget, I'll make sure um, that I share with you, Jody, and, and the staff as well. Actually, all of you. 
Well, and we will be sitting together then later that evening, right? Yeah. So that we, it would be a good opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. As a request, can you send that formally out in email? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to be doing it as soon as I get out of here. Um, the next item was a debrief on last night's forum. Yeah, just we thought we'd check in. Yes. Yeah. So good job. Press. Thanks. Um, I, I just wanted to mention, I really think, uh, Jody, I just want to say thank you. Yeah. You did an incredible job, much better than the guy I had to work with last year. <laughs> um, but uh, I <laughs> a lot more I <laughs> It was, no, um, all of you, um, you know, and even on our side, um, we may have only had 15 or so people, but it was still well worth it. I think that, uh, you know, it just um, tells the story about where we've been and where we're going, and next year will be even better. There'll be many more that will hopefully look at the questions and answers on, online yeah. when those are posted, so I think there'll be benefit beyond just those that showed up. From the audience, it looks like a very no. unified... No. Do you know how many or you up there behind that table. I yeah. thought it was really nice. Absolutely. It was really seamless right. right. between yeah. both sides of the table. I thought it was very nice to see yeah. the partnership. Sure it's it's not yeah. 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 When will all those answers be uh, posted? Tom, when will the answers be posted? Because I know that all, not all the questions were prior to yeah. last night. So, I mean, right, there were a handful that came last night. We've written those down. We sent the school ones to Kate and George, and we're oh. handling our end. Call I would think by end of business yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So the ones that were already answered last night that had come in in advance, are those up already? I didn't look today. No, no, no I, I'm not going to go over all words, all I, I, I thought it would be best okay. to yeah. wait a little bit, put one up, up and keep it up. Do you Thanks. know when you want that to go up? Because I know I looked at one of the questions last night and I thought, oh, I started to answer this on the paper, but I didn't finish it. And it's like, oh, I hope they don't ask that question. So there's a couple that I, I noticed that. <laughs> and I was glad they didn't ask it. Um, you know, no, as soon as we can, maybe as soon as the end of business, you know, by the end of business tomorrow. Maybe also a caveat, too, if there are additional questions, not post them there, but send them to chair. Yeah, we're not going to continue room. to keep that uh, portal open for right. more questions, but right. certainly I would hope folks can reach out to anyone around this table if they have questions. Just as a, just as a fallback to say, further questions, please, here or wherever. Mm -hmm. you know. And Peter asked that, uh, you know, see if we can, we'll, we'll track once that's up as the document, uh, the number hits, just so we get a sense of okay. the traffic that's mm -hmm. going there for... Okay. It could be the same you one know. of us hitting it 12 times because <laughs> they didn't have a chance to read it in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Two things that I wanted to mention, one is a takeaway, and that is I hope because I tried to emphasize it a little bit, and the purpose of my presentation is that, you know, it seems like we get caught up with these gotcha questions. They're not really fact-finding questions. It's more like, oh, you know, I want to make a point type of thing. And then you're always going to have those. Um, but I hope that if anything, the message that came out of yesterday, which is a big jump, is that you can't look at simply the change that happens from last year. You really have to look at the full picture and see what has happened over time. Okay. Um, and I, I got a lot of positive feedback from people that were watching at home about that it was a very clear message from both the school side and the town side and that they really appreciated the, the long term. I, the, one of the comments that I got was the best graph um, was the one that showed the tax rate that kind of just went up and spiked down and it really, they didn't, people don't realize that. They didn't, they didn't realize that. So, you know, and the other piece is that I wanted to clarify um, a question that I had answered which was really a school question because I called the state today. Um, the estimated, if we were funded at 55%, the estimated amount of increase that the town of Scarborough would get is approximately actually $5 million. Mm. Well, you know, it makes sense because it's based on your expenditures. Yeah. So, so it's the not the four that was mentioned. And I, it kind of uh, being the nerd, finance nerd, tuck, whatever, stat nerd, um, I actually looked at what would be the impact if we actually got $4 million is what my answer was we'd actually be saving every residential taxpayer $178. If we didn't add it to their budget and we just used it to reduce the tax. Right. I mean, again, <laughs> uh, like every other stat, you have to assume that, so I assume that there was no future investment as a result of the $4 million, which is unrealistic. That's, that's why we're having the yeah. <laughs> But, but, I just, well, but totally the purpose, you have to stick a, uh, uh, stick, uh, what is it, a stake in the ground at some <laughs> point. So it would be, a, I mean, it just shows the importance of the state's contribution to education in our community. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, it goes to the point that one of the reasons that we've had such difficulty in these last five years has been because of that loss of income mm -hmm. and not because of the budget on the town or the school side going cuckoo. Right. It's, the, it's the revenue piece. Well, and I also looked and said, you know, if um, there was focus about, well, if we didn't have the windfall, which was a horrible word, what would have happened? Well, what didn't, um, they didn't ask is, 
um, what would have happened if we were at least funded flat to last year. This year's tax rate would only be 1.3 percent based on the budget that's been presented. So if the state was funded. Mm -hmm. Another million dollars. Right. It would have been 1.3 percent. I mean, we're dealing with speculation. Is, right. is, is, is just, it's just, it's, I, I think yeah. it's a waste of our time with the resources and stuff. I'm not a waste of my time. Yeah, you know, Maybe I mean, you, you can leave. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. <it's> <laughs> I, 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 sorry. I, I mean, I do think that um, the, um, Go ahead, Tom. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, from an I did that on purpose. And from an editorial point of view, uh, last night we we had Kevin focus on questions only. Yeah. Many of the questions had a little commentary that was the preface to, before they got to yeah. the interaction question. I don't want to take any liberties in editing someone's work, mm -hmm. so I'm inclined to include mm -hmm. the commentary yeah. and the question mm -hmm. in the published document. So you mean when yeah. Kevin yeah. actually yeah. read the question, he just read the question piece. He didn't give the correct. Yeah, we yeah. went through oh, and parsed out the question from who said a who question, and we, there were a lot from a few people uh, who wrote who asked the question, and I think it was just right off the sheet, right? Whatever. Yeah, I'm inclined to show. Yeah, people took the time to write yeah. it. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. it's yeah. important yeah. to put it out there. Um, okay. Thank you. If two people button. didn't submit the questions, it would have been a very long night. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think if two people hadn't yeah. submitted as many questions as they did, it would have been a very long night. Well, or, or a short, 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 you know, and let's focus on what we need to do. Yeah. If that comes in, great. That's that's like that's not a problem. Right. <laughs> if it doesn't come in, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. I just wanted to also thank the staff from both yeah. the town and the school department. I mean, there were 40 plus, maybe 50 staff members there last night, taking time away from their family, mm -hmm. their lives, things yeah. to do, and voluntarily, right? Sure. I know they were up on the school team. <laughs> all volunteers. All volunteers. I, I heard a first few chains and groaned and moaned. I don't know. They're not getting huge bonuses for it. I can guarantee you that too. So I just think you know it, it's a lot to ask. I know the it school is. department people are probably coming back again tonight for our meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's just it was nice to see all of those leaders sure. in this town be there last night. Let's say volunteer again, they'll be there tonight. <laughs> I suspect you'll see them all, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giving group. <laughs> you know, one, one, one format thought, again, if, if when we do it again next year, and if, it, if it's a low turnout, what might be nice to kind of create some interchange is that, you know, I think it could have been that some of the, something that sometimes gets lost, I think you write a question down and then someone else interprets it and it's asked, maybe just give the opportunity for people to stand up and at least have a quick follow up or something. You know, that wasn't yeah. my question or, or so you get a little bit of back and forth. But you can't do that with a hundred. You might right. be able to do that with twenty. So I was even thinking of, I was even thinking to myself it's kinda of like to to maybe I, I don't want to say limit anybody's potential, but to say maybe you know you gotta be present to ask your question. But then the flip side of that is I know people would say, I don't like to get up in public. Yeah. I'm nervous. Right. I don't wanna you know, so I'm I I have questions, I just don't want to get up there in front of the podium and because I'm nervous or But I I mean that given the option, why not? I mean, yeah. I, mean I think there. sometimes it, it yeah. makes Question could be, you know, or yeah. maybe it didn't really answer what the person wanted. Person, you, just, yeah. you give them a quick, simple not, question not from Kevin as he reads the name out. If the person's present and they want to follow sure. up or something, the podium's yeah. right there. Raise your hand. Come That'd on up to the podium. Yeah, the first year we thought about passing the mic, and yeah. then we yeah. just weren't sure what the turnout would right. right. be possible just logistically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you're right. If, if it trends yeah. in the way it is, I think that's entirely possible. It was a great job. Yeah. Right. Good. Um, Thank you for the input. Revisit running list of topics for the May 12th and May 28th meeting. That's down in the box it's below. Those are kind of a yeah. running list of issues. They're exciting. Well, <laughs> 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 You're your not limited to that list. <laughs> so the question I have is, um, question whether any of them are even still, uh, relevant. still relevant given the conversations we've had to this point and if we should be looking at I think that if any personally I'm happy with removing all of them and maybe suggesting that we start looking at uh, pre-planning for next year 
so that by the end of the budget cycle and the budget we can state to the public that here's the forum process for next or not the forum but here's the budgetary process for next year it will follow exactly like it is today you know, things like that just and that might be good for the May 28th one right May, yeah May 12th we're meeting right don't we all meet the day before maybe yeah. there's some debriefing that would happen there or, or thinking about a communication plan I mean, it's, we, we yeah, should know where we, you know, we, we know yeah. where we landed, yeah. and again, how right. are we going to tell the story? I mean, our goal right. is to get this passed the first time around. Right. And, and maybe on the list. You know, and with that, maybe at the 12th, also, um, I'll have feedback from the rest of um, the council regarding any um, adjustments or any considerations they want to see the impact of both of us. Then we can have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But I can also share those that don't impact you. Well, won't that have happened on the 11th at 7 p.m.? Won't we know? All of that. The Maybe day, we'll know that the night yeah. before, won't we? Yeah, because you'll see the adjustments. But then I think, like what Peter yes said, no. we'll know sort of where we're at, um, and so then how do we move from May 12th to June 14th? Right. Uh, well, that's all messaging. I like Peter. Right. That's all yeah. messaging. Yeah. I think Wait, we, but how do we? Yeah. We sit down and we decide. You know, to Tom's point, do we want two or three? What are our two or three takeaways that we want to right. keep hitting on coming on here? I mean, we could. You know, I, anybody can. The way it's set up, anybody can start big and go as deep as they want, but we, we should probably, to your point, Tom, have some kind of message, joint message that we issue that we can bring to the council and, and you can bring to the board and then we can all get on the, get yeah, on the same page. I, I, I forgot about the calendar. Yeah, May 11th, we'll have already made a decision right. on the finance committee. Yeah, right. sorry. Right. Right. But, but the council's second reading since yeah. the following week, you know, things aren't right. done until the council's right. approved right. all those. So I think it makes sense to keep that date. And oh, yeah, and I, I like the idea of communication. I think that could be sort of... So you want to simplify that agenda and just kind of... Yep. Have it a workshop. Yeah, have um, no kind of special topics. Workshop. Just be in a position to react to what the finance committee yep. communicates. Well, right. And yeah. also, um, not to bring any, um, not to look at it from a negative perspective, but also talk about contingency planning around the budget. What if, the what if, mm -hmm. um, you know, what if the citizens don't have, you know, talk about in June there is no approval, what do we do as a group? Because the one piece that fell apart, that I'll agree fell apart yeah. last year, yeah. was the communication after the first right. vote. Right. So well, maybe in May, on the 12th, we can talk about what do we want to plan for as a contingency if it doesn't pass. Just from a scheduling perspective and, you know, communications amongst our groups and, you know, when are we going to meet? Because we didn't meet yeah. at all. If you think about it, we didn't meet at all after the first. So I'd like, to, I'd like to take the positive approach. I'd like the yeah. idea, but I'd yeah. take the positive approach and set a date for right after the, right after, hold the date right after the vote. Mm -hmm. And if it, if it doesn't pass. We, we've got that date saved, we can come back and then circle sure. the wagons and decide what we need to do and how we need to do it. If it passes, we let go of the date and say, good job. Or we, so much. or we have a date and say, yeah. hey, this is why yeah. this works so well. Party I like is that a town council meeting night? We're going to do that on No, it's a Thursday. No, it's a school board. This is a Thursday. Thursday. Oh, okay. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't have to be. I was just saying we were yeah, accustomed to being Thursday. Sure. Yeah. We all know we're not going to meet that date. Right. Let's, just sit, let's just say that right now. That date is just, it's just a whole thing. Well, with anything, we can meet and pat each other on the back. There's nothing to debrief. What went right, what went wrong. So we'll keep the 28th at the 12th. We'll evaluate whether they yeah. want to keep that, but at this point, let's keep it on the schedule. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you all. Thank and you. And then, yep, perfect. Three o'clock. Are we all set? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.